Welcome. Uh, fields. This is um, this is what, what chapter is this? Chapter twenty one. Anyway. This is chapter 21 in the book. Um, and fields, um, well, you know what fields are. The topic is really, you could also say it's polynomial equations. So, The questions, questions like um, when, when is there a root of polynomial? So, when does a polynomial have a solution to um, in a particular field? And also going the other way around. Um, what do polynomials having or not having roots tell us about a, a field? So, um, so the first also. I should say, if if PDX has no solution, um, how can I make it so that it does have a solution? Um, That is kind of the question I'm going to answer today. So, um, for example, there's no square root of negative one in the real numbers, but I can uh, I can construct a field. Um, Uh, where, where it has a solution, as you know, I can even I can even say I can construct the complex numbers just as a thing that gives me a solution. Um, okay, so I think. I should start with a, a review thing. Um, so something that we've talked about, welcome. We've talked about in the in the past, I'm sure. Um, say we have fields. Um, And we have a homomorphism. Um, any homomorphism between fields is injective. So maybe this rings a bell. If not, let's prove it again. Um, you have a homomorphism between fields. What, um, how can I show that it's injective?
you've got two different elements, so say like A and B, so that E of A and E of B are equal, and then you show that they, like A and B are equal in uh, the field F as well. Okay. Or the other way around. Suppose we have two elements um, and VF, and they have the same image. Uh, I need to, I need to show. Line. I need to show that they, they they are the same, or maybe assume that they're different. Yes, it's going to be better. So, um, so how can I use that? That F is a field to show this. What makes a field different from a ring? There's a notion of um, order in the elements. No, fields don't have order. Um, the, the fields, no. Uh, the complex numbers don't really have any any reasonable order. Yeah, yeah. And ZP doesn't either. So maybe I should start with that. So uh, what makes a what makes a ring a field? <coughs> it's commutative and no zero divisors, right? That is that is a property of fields, um, but it's not not all you know. The integers have no zero divisors, and and they're not a field. No zero divisors make it makes it an integral domain. Uh, but it doesn't make it a field. Say all of the elements have additive and multiplicative inverses. Right, exactly. So, exactly. Uh, Mason, Mason and, and John get a point. Um, Uh, a field is a ring where you can, uh, so in a ring you can add, subtract, and multiply. In a field you can also divide, except by zero. Um, every element except for zero has an, a multiplicative inverse. All right, so back to the proposition. I need to somehow, I need to use that F is a field. Actually, I'm going to tell you right now that it doesn't matter that E is a field. Um, so I need to take some element in F that I know is not zero and use its inverse somehow to prove this. B minus A. B minus A, exactly, yeah, B minus A. Uh, A is not B, right, that was a point as well. So um, A is not B, so B minus A is not zero. So um, since F is a field, There's an there's an inverse to this element. <clears throat> right. So I've used the hypothesis that f is a field, and now I need to use the hypothesis that f is a homomorphism. Uh, 
how can I use that? Five B minus A should be five B minus five A. Right, so um, if this is zero, zero is supposed to be five B minus, well, if B, if A, and because it's a homomorphism, subtracting before and after is the same. Um, so you, so the thing is, on the other hand, we know that B minus A has an inverse. <clears throat> and this is gonna this is gonna this is not gonna work because the image the image of a unit has to be a unit. On the other and now I'm on the space, of course. Uh, okay, let me let me just rewrite the the things in the next slide. So B is not A. So B minus A is not zero. So yeah, we have some inverse. Um, so what happens when you multiply B minus A times its inverse? Well, what happens is you get one. Um, and then when you apply phi to both sides, you have that here you get phi of one, which is one. A homomorphism for me always have to has to send one to one. Uh, but I just said that I just said that b minus a is zero. P of B minus A is zero. So I have that zero times something is one, uh, which doesn't, just doesn't work at all. Because this is um, the image of phi is in E, and E is a field, so zero is not one. I guess I did use that E is a field, but it's enough that it's not the zero ring. <clears throat> so the contradiction comes from com thinking that if P is not A, uh, phi of B can be phi of A. Okay, right, any questions? Okay, right, um, let me give you the proof I wanted to give, um, which is the same thing, but shorter. Take C. The kernel of phi. So if you try, if you, if you want to show, I mean, if you want to show that a map is injective, you take two elements that are different and you see that they cannot have the same image. But if you want to show that some sort of homomorphism is injective, you don't do that. You show that the kernel is zero because it's just the same, but easier because one of the elements you get to choose is zero. And, and the same conclusion follows. So the kernel. It's an ideal of F. Uh, I mean, that's what ideals are. We define them to be. Uh, we define them to be just the properties that the kernel of a map has, and the only ideals in a field are zero and F and and everything. So if F um, is the kernel, that means that everything is going to zero. So uh, phi of one is zero, 
but also one. So this is a contradiction. This implies again that E must be the zero ring. So the kernel must be zero, which means that phi is injected. Uh, the kernel being zero mean, means that the only thing that goes to zero is zero. And, and that is enough to show that a map is injective. Any questions? Any questions? Um, maybe a bit of a silly one, but I guess hey, could you, if you like modify the map in some small way to where instead of the kernel of phi um, being zero, you have the kernel of phi as some other just one element in E, could you still call it injective so long as only one element maps to zero? And then you'd have some other element that maps to the identity. Uh, I mean that makes sense, but with what we call homomorphism, it can't really happen. Um, the kernel of phi is the set of things that map to zero. And one thing that I know always maps to zero is is zero. The definition of being a homomorphism and also just by the addition property. So zero is always in here. So if it has one element, that one element is, is gonna be zero. Um, or also, you know, it's an ideal. An ideal is always contains zero. So the kernel, if the kernel has one thing, there, there's one thing that's guaranteed to be in there, and that's zero. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So every map between fields is injective. Um, so when you take when you take two fields um uh well what happens if it's injective you might as well say that f is contained in e um if you if you look at um at the at the image, then when we restrict uh, this is injective because phi is injective and also surjective because we we took the image on the right hand side. Everything everything in the image has. A pre image, that's what the image is. Um, so it's an isomorphism. So, um, so phi is isomorphic to some field contained in E. So, in conclusion, we might as well say that E contains phi. This is the only interesting thing that fields can do contain each other. Uh, contains F, sorry. Okay, so this is, uh, we call this a field extension. If um, EF are fields and F is contained in E, we call uh, E a field extension. 
of f um what we call maybe the whole the pair of fields of field extension we might call f the base field i think so um Right, so what's an example? What are examples of fields that contain each other? What are examples of fields? The complex numbers are a field extension of the reals. Right, so that's, um, that may be the best example. Um, what, is, what is another example? Q and R. Uh, thank you, Duncan, you get a point. uh the the rationals um uh, are extended by the reals um i mean those are those are the the most the, the most familiar examples um you could also you just take any field for example q is contained also in the field of rational functions. This is the field of fractions of the polynomial ring. Um, I don't know, also, for example, there's a lot of fields between the rationals and the complex numbers. Um, Q is contained in Q of I. This is also a field as we've seen. <clears throat> okay, so these are the kind of things I wanna, I wanna study. So let me give you, um, so I guess the, the first question I have is how do we construct field extensions? So let's take Z2, the easiest field, and take the polynomial x squared plus x plus one. Um, so, oh, this was in the homework uh, a few weeks ago. Do you remember why P is irreducible? Wasn't it that all the elements in Z2 or none of them map to zero, right? Yeah. Um, the only factors can have degree one because it's degree two. Um, and if you have a factor of degree one, you have a root. Um, he has a root two and he has no roots because um, just plug in zero, plug in one, you get one for both. So um, we're going to, going to construct an extension Z2 contain uh, in F such that F has a root, uh, B has a root in F, sorry. Um, 
<clears throat> so, um, so I mean, let me give you half of an approach. Um, so you both give the same answer. So the first approach is just let alpha be just a letter. Um, and then say we have, uh, say we have the relation alpha squared plus alpha plus one is zero. Uh, try, to, try to make a field try to write addition and multiplication tables. For example, so you would have like addition, you know how to add zero and one. So zero plus anything is itself, the field has characteristic two, so alpha plus alpha is alpha times one plus one, which is alpha times two, which is zero. Um, I don't know what alpha plus one is supposed to be. Um, I mean, it's supposed to be a group, so I don't know. You can probably figure out that you can complete this to a group. Um, Try to do multiplication tables. And again, you know that zero times anything is zero and one times anything is itself. And alpha squared plus alpha plus one. So you can solve for alpha squared here. Alpha squared is um, negative alpha minus one. Oh. which is just alpha plus one, because if if one plus one is zero, one equals negative one, right? Characteristic two is the best because you don't, you never make a sign error. <clears throat> so, um, so this seems to be alpha plus one. So I don't know, try to go this way. Um, it's It's doable, but then, you know, Eventually, you're gonna you're gonna realize you need four elements, and you're gonna have to check how many axioms does a field have, like nine or ten. You you know, have to check the addition forms a group, which is four axioms. You're gonna have to check that multiplication has a unit, is commutative, distributive, associative, which is the worst always, um, and has inverses. So that's ten ten things to check. I think. Um, I'm not gonna do it this way. I'm gonna find a better way. Does it make sense what I'm trying to do here? Are there any questions? Yeah, I have a question for the addition uh -huh. table. Um, since you just wrote that alpha squared is equal to alpha plus one, wouldn't mm -hmm. the like alpha plus plus one in the first table be just alpha squared or alpha plus one as well. Uh, yeah, actually, that that will work. Um, so honestly, I'm sure if I gave you like an hour, you would feel this out. You would figure it out. Uh, then you need to figure out like what alpha squared plus alpha is, um, and and you totally can do that. Um, you like you need to feel this out. It's just annoying, and it's. And more importantly, if I give you a new polynomial and, and a new field, um, you have to do this all over again. And what if I give you a field which is which is infinite? Like you're gonna write an infinite multiplication table. Um, so instead of instead of trying to do this by hand, which I think is a nice example, uh, we're gonna try to do this in a way that will always work. But, but you're absolutely right. Um, 
it's a fun game to play to fill this table. Any other questions? Okay, so approach number two is to say that B is irreducible um, um, and the polynomial ring is a PAD. And you know what you know what this means? It means that uh, this ideal that it generates is maximal. So um, why is this maximal? Because any ideal that contains it is going to have to be generated by a divisor. But there's only two divisors itself, which gives me the same ideal, and one, which gives me the unit ideal, which doesn't make it not maximal. Maximal means the only bigger ideal is the unit ideal. Um, and if you're maximal, Maybe I should write. If it's contained somewhere, this is the same as saying that G divides B, which makes it maximal. And now, the best way to think about maximal ideals is in terms of their quotient. What happens? What happens to the quotient by a maximal ideal? happens to the quotients by a, by a prime ideal. It's kind of related. <clears throat> right. Um, well, this is, this is the one thing to remember about maximal ideals. Um, an ideal being maximal means that the quotient is a field. An ideal being prime means that the quotient is a domain. Um, so <clears throat> what do I want to say? I mean, this is here's a proof. But really, I think that the proof to keep in mind is to think of what ideals the quotient could have. Um, and you should reach the conclusion. Oh, it's a field. You, you said it. Maybe oh, I missed it in the chat. Um, ideals. So ideals in the quotient are are ideals that contain the thing you're quotienting by. And we said there's nothing containing this ideal. So there's no ideals in the quotient other than the obvious ones. And then and a ring with no ideals is a field. Anyway. You quotient by a maximal ideal, you get a field automatically. So, um, so there you go. There's a field, and I didn't need to check all the crazy axioms. Uh, I guess I need to check um, that it contains. and that it contains the original field and that it contains a root of x squared plus x plus one. But first, uh, let's see what the, the elements look like. So, Before we answer this question, let me ask you a question that I'm sure you know the answer to. If I, if I ask you to write a list of the elements of Z, 
mod 5. What's that list? What are the elements of Zima 5? Zero through four. Zero through four. And the reason you're saying that, I believe, is that they are the remainders you can get when you divide by five. So the elements of this quotient, what are they going to be? The way this quotient, this is x squared plus x plus 1. All the remainders you get by dividing by x All the remainders you get. Um, and what does, how does division work? What kind of remainders do you get? Could you get X to the fourth as a remainder? Mason? Um, it does the degree has to be less than, well, uh, I don't know. Exactly. When you, when you do division, um, you get the remainder has degree less than what you're dividing by. So you divide by a polynomial of degree two, the remainder is going to have degree zero or, or one. Just like when you divide by five. Have, sorry, could it, could it still have degree two? Or does it have to be less than? It has to be less than, right? Because right. you know, if you if you're dividing here, you can if if you have this division, you can still do one more step. Uh, it's when you have smaller degree that you can't keep going. So when you divide by five, you get numbers smaller than five, not five. Um, when you divide by x squared plus x plus one, you get polynomials of the of degree smaller than two and not two. Uh, so, I mean, uh, I can write them all. That I mean, they're they're equivalence classes, I guess. It's, you know, the elements of Z5 are not literally 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. They're the, the congruence classes, right? 6 is equal to 1 in Z5. So it's not really the number 1, because it's also the number 6. So, um, well, what I'm looking at, so Z2 mod x squared plus x plus 1 is the set 0, 1, the class of x and the class of x plus 1. Um, and what I know is that the class of x squared plus x plus 1, this is in the ideal, so this is 0. So let's just, um, so that I'm not writing bracket, I'm going to call alpha the class of x. Um, just so it doesn't look like a variable. And then you have that alpha squared plus alpha plus one is zero. So just rewriting, rewriting it this way, what I have is that there's these four elements in this quotient field. I already know it's a field. Um, I, and I already know 
that alpha squared plus alpha plus one is zero. So, um, so I have a root of the elements that I wanted. Uh, I have a field because I, I know I must have gotten a field because I, I did a quotient by a maximal ideal. Um, all it's left um, is that it contains the original field. So how can I see this? I mean, this is, it might be one of those things that is so clear that it's kind of confusing what you have to prove. But that is also a challenge figuring out what you have to prove. Right, it's zero degree polynomials. And the thing is, so here, the image of Z2 is polynomials of degree zero, constant polynomials. And I guess the question is, so you have an element in Z2 and you send it to its class. So the question is, if I add them as elements of Z2 or as polynomials, do I get the same answer? So this is operations in Z2. And this is operations as degree two polynomials. And the answer is that I do get the same. So um, but once you realize what question you're asking, you realize that the answer is, is yes, as it should be. If I multiply two numbers, is it the same as multiplying them as degree zero polynomials? Well, yes. Um, could, could it be, I don't know, could it be that this map is not injective? No, because Z2 is a field. Um, so, so that, I mean, that's it. That's everything I wanted. Now I can, now that I know what the elements are, I can go write the, the addition table and multiplication table. So zero plus anything is zero. Um, this part I know. So this is, um, I mean, it's symmetric. So there's really only five graphs here. Anything plus itself is zero because one plus one is zero. So there's three things to fill out. And I don't even know how to ask you what is alpha plus one. Um, because you know the answer the answer is in the question alpha plus one is alpha plus one so what's left um what is alpha plus one plus one alpha alpha because one plus one is zero and now i mean alpha plus one plus alpha, you can see what's gonna be. Also, this is supposed to be a group. Um, and in a group group um, operation table, everything appears once in every, it's like a Sudoku, right? Everything appears once in every row and column. So for any reason you like, the remaining thing is one. Um, so if you remember last semester, I wonder um, what is, um, I wonder if you remember what group 
from the list of finite groups, uh, this table corresponds to. It's a commutative group, so not many things in that list. Not many groups of further four, only two of them. And if you do multiplication, uh, I'm gonna leave zero out because zero times anything is zero. Uh, well, w one times anything oh, is itself. Uh, so only, I mean, only four gaps to fill here. And also it's, this is also a group because it's a field and everything is invertible. So alpha squared, I mean, you know what alpha squared is. Um, what's alpha squared? Alpha plus one. Alpha plus one. Because alpha squared plus alpha plus one is zero. <clears throat> so, I mean, not that many ways to fill this out in exactly one. So alpha times alpha plus one is alpha squared plus alpha. And based on this equation again, this has to be one. And finally, alpha plus one squared um, in, in characteristic two, you have the freshman stream that the sum of two squares is the squares of the sum because the other term has a two in there. So this is alpha squared plus one, which we already decided is alpha plus one. So this is alpha, which of course it should be, it's the only thing left in the row. So, um, so th there's a field with four elements and here are its addition and multiplication tables. And, and the question that we'll answer, um, uh, maybe I'll just write the theorem for Wednesday. Uh, for every field F and P of X irreducible and not constant. There exists a field E containing F uh, and an element in E uh, that is a root. So um, what we just did for what we just did for the field with two elements um, and this particular polynomial, you can do with any reducible polynomial. Sort of like the way you add i to the real numbers. Um, all right, uh, that's it. So I'm gonna stop recording, and my office hours are right now.